Hey everyone, welcome to week 47. This week we're going to continue in our Synth School series, and we're going to be taking a look at what makes the Maelstrom Grain Table Synthesizer have such a unique sound. Since we covered a lot of the basics of subtractive synthesis using the subtractor over the last few weeks, this week we're going to learn what types of sounds you can create using the Maelstrom. The Maelstrom uses what we call grain table synthesis, which is actually a combination of two synthesis methods, granular synthesis and wavetable synthesis. Granular synthesis is a method of synthesis that uses a number of short, continuous slices or grains of sound, each typically from 5 to 100 milliseconds long. The sound is varied by changing the properties of each grain and or the order in which they are spliced together. Grains can be produced by either a mathematical formula or by a sampled sound. This is a very dynamic synthesis method capable of producing a great variety of results and sounds, but can be hard to master and control. Wavetable synthesis, on the other hand, is basically the playback of a sampled and looped waveform, much like the generated waveforms on the oscillator section of the subtractor. An oscillator in a wavetable synth plays back a single period or loop of a waveform, and some wavetable synths also allow for sweeping through a set of periodic waveforms. This is a very straightforward synthesis method, which is easily controlled, but a bit more restricted in its results. The Maelstrom combines these two types into one synthesis method that provides a very flexible way of synthesizing or creating sounds with lots of room for motion and morphing. The two oscillators in the Maelstrom play back sampled sounds that have been subjected to some very complex processing and cut up into a number of grains. A set of these periodic waveforms or grains are then spliced together to form a grain table, which may be played back to reproduce the original sampled sound. A grain table may be treated just like a wave table. For example, you may choose to sweep through it, to move through it at any speed without affecting pitch, to loop and play any section of it repeatedly, to select static waveforms from it, to jump between positions, and more. There are two grain table oscillators on the Maelstrom, and they share exactly the same parameters when it comes to creating the initial texture or sound. To activate or hear an oscillator, you must turn it on here. You select the grain table by either using the arrow up and down buttons here or clicking in the dialog box and selecting it from a pop-up menu. The grain tables are sorted alphabetically into a number of descriptive categories, which gives us a hint as to the general character of the sound. The octave, semi, and cent knobs behave exactly the same as they do in the subtractor, allowing us to change the fundamental frequency or pitch of that oscillator so we really do not need to go into much detail here. What is different about the Maelstrom are the index, motion, and shift parameters. These controls determine how the grain table that you have chosen is played back. The index slider sets the playback starting point in the grain table. By dragging the slider, you set which index point in the grain table should be played first when the Maelstrom receives a note on message. Playback will then continue to the next index point, according to the active grain table. With the slider set all the way to the left, the first segment or slice in the grain table is the one that will be played back first. Note that the grain tables in the Maelstrom are not all of the same length, 
and that the range for the index slider, which is 0 to 127, does not necessarily reflect the actual length of the grain tables. For example, regardless of whether a grain table contains 3 or 33 grains, the index slider will always span the entire grain table range, even though the slider range says 0 through 127. The motion knob controls how fast it should move forward to play the next segment in the grain table according to the motion pattern. If the knob is kept in the middle position, the speed of motion is in the normal default setting. Turning the knob to the left slows it down. Turning it to the right results in a higher speed. If the knob is set all the way to the left, there will be no motion at all, which means that the initial segment, as we set with the index slider, will play over and over as a static looped waveform. The shift knob changes the timbre of the sound, or the formant spectrum. What it actually does is change the pitch of a segment up or down by resampling. However, since the pitch you hear is independent of the actual pitch of the grain table, Pitch shifting a segment instead means that more or less of the segment waveform will be played back, which will result in a change of harmonic content. One thing to note, each grain table has a predefined motion pattern and a default motion speed. When a grain table is looped, when the motion knob is not set all the way to the left, it follows one of two possible motion patterns. Forward, which plays the grain table from beginning to end, and then repeats it. Or forward-backward, which plays the grain table from beginning to the end, then from the end to the beginning, and continually repeats. Sort of like a pendulum on an old clock. The motion speed can be changed using the motion knob, but it is not possible to alter the set motion pattern of a grain table. The envelopes in each oscillator are amplitude or volume envelopes, and behave exactly like the amp envelope on the subtractor, which we learned about a couple of weeks ago. and this level control is the overall output volume of that oscillator. Next week we're going to cover some of the new filter types, the shaper, signal routing, and new modulation possibilities and play modifiers that are on the Maelstrom. Well that's it for yet another week. Again, I'm James Bernard from Propellerhead Software, and I'll see you all next week with another tip. Bye.